30 carries for Zeke? An asteroid-induced nuclear winter? What would it take for the Cowboys to beat the Saints tonight? Also, Warriors All Raptors it. with Jay Adande, Tim Kalashaw, Woody Page, Phil Plaschke. Let's go! Adande, I'm on go. the show with Adande again. I'm back. Adande, guess what? I own LA, buddy. Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> that town. Still got property in San Juan. I'm in your seat, AJ, right here. I'm in your seat. Let's keep it warm. Saints Cowboys, Thursday night football. The Cowboys defense has a craving. And the only way to fill it could come from facing the Saints imposing offense. That's your paper, Tim Kalashaw. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. I'm considering uh, maybe the idea here. If there's a blueprint for the Saints, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe it could be the ball control offense, the time of possession offense, the running back five yards to clip offense, maybe, or maybe not. Let's start out with the man on the scene. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Are you giving the Cowboys a chance in this one? I am giving them a chance, and by that I mean that seven-point spread looks a little high, looks a little disrespectful. Disrespectful? Uh, they, they I don't think chance. it's disrespectful by any means. The Saints are the best offense it in the history. It should be like four. It should be like three and a half. Uh, the Cowboys have won three in a row. Have the Saints? Oh, okay. They, they won ten. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. You mentioned it. Zeke, 30 carries for Zeke. That's part of the deal. Uh, first back to run for 100 yards. Cowboys can do that against the Saints. It's a bigger deal to slow down Kamara and Ingram and the Saints' running game, and they've been great this year. They're averaging 4.8. Cowboys' defense is very solid. I don't know if it's a great defense, but it's very solid. Oh, good. Uh, against everything, solid. really. <laughs> and uh, you, all you got to do, look what happened a month ago. They went to Baltimore. They beat them 24 to 23. Cowboys defense, comparable to the Ravens, better offense. That's the formula. Okay, so fill in the blank for us here. If Ezekiel Elliott does blank, the Cowboys win tonight. Touches the ball 32 times. 32 times. times. That's the line that oh. Kalashaw's laying. J.A. Hey, Don, they join us. It's going to take that. The, the problem is, Tim, is that the Cowboys ha or have been using that formula recently for success in their last three games. But during that time, they have not trailed by more than three points. So they've been able to gradually work their way in to feed the running game and allow that to open things up for Dak Prescott. Do you really think they're going to be able to stay within three the whole time of the Saints with their prolific offense? And the Saints, we know about their offensive numbers. You realize they have nine takeaways on defense in their last three games as well. So the Cowboys are going to have to play perfect football. They can't give the ball away, and they're going to have to grind it out. If they can stay close, I'm not sure they're going to be able to do all no of those Plasky. things. I don't think the Cowboys have a chance. The last five times the leading rusher has faced the league's leading rushing defense, only one of those times has the leading rusher got more than 100 yards. They're going to stop Zeke. This is going to put it all on Dak. They're going to stop Zeke. Dak's going to have to win this game for them. I don't think he can. Last three games, he's thrown a total of three touchdown passes. I think he's 25th in the league in total QBR. I just don't think Dak can win it for him, and that's what who has to win it for him. Woody Page? Yeah. Yeah, I agree totally with Bill, but I'll play your silly game tone mm -hmm. and say how they can win the game. You come up with a cover three defense and disguise it. You start with three, three safeties mm -hmm. and you move one of them out as soon as the ball is snapped. So you can go from a cover three to a cover two. And because you have got okay. to come up well, with Okay, well, I mean, I'll give you points for thinking that. You think this is going to flummox Drew Brees. You, you, ob you obviously have not <laughs> seen Drew, play, Drew Brees play but too you've much. Got but you've got to... You have him. You got to have him a little bit confused, like you are right now, in regard to where he's <laughs> going like to go you with are the right ball, now. because you've you've got to get some turnovers against him. I mean, here's a guy who's only thrown one interception all year. So if you're somewhat flummoxing him in the backfield, you've got a chance to defensively. And if uh, if Demarcus Lawrence plays like uh, Demarcus Ware. And comes in against the. All right, those the are the ifs. I, you know what? I asked the question, what those it would it take, ways. and you gave me the answer, Woody Page. You came up with a cover three, and you believe that's the way to get to Drew Brees. Kalashaw, yeah, do you want to address that? And... Well, a man who just was the definition of flummox just got 11 points. I'm not sure how to respond <laughs> to that. I will say that uh, Adonde was right earlier about the turnovers. The Cowboys are very good at not turning the ball over, but. They haven't won a game where they do turn the ball over, so they do have to play a nearly perfect game tonight. Flashkey, last word. I tell you, if the Cowboys do win this game, they're in the playoffs. I think this will clinch, this virtually clinch a playoff uh, berth for them. The Eagles have a tough schedule down the stretch. 
Cowboys mm -hmm. get in. Or they could lose this game, lose next week, maybe win one more game and still get in the playoffs. That's what the <laughs> NFC East looks like the right NFC now. NFC East. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. Baker Mayfield is still being asked questions, and Baker Mayfield is still talking. Take a listen. I didn't like the move, and people don't have to care. I mean, I'm not looking for anybody's approval. Uh, I don't regret any of it. There's just things that happen inside the building that I'm not going to get into detail with. It's, it's in-house information. It doesn't matter. This is going on three days, four days, right, Bill Plaschke? Uh, I mean, maybe you think it's Mayfield being outspoken. Maybe it's Mayfield answering the questions that are being asked of him. But how are you reviewing it all? I think he needs to dial it back a little bit. He's talking not about planting a flag on some other team's uh, in the middle of the field. He's talking about a human being who lost his job, and he's talking about his you know animosity toward that toward Hugh Jackson. And I think I don't think the whole uh, locker room of the Browns is is behind him on this. You saw one you of the Browns think. handed Hugh a ball the other day. So I I think this could be you know uh, dividing the locker room. I think it's a distraction. I don't think he needs really? to be discussing it anymore. He can just say we've yeah. I think, I think, I think Later on, Mayfield on. talked about explicitly that point about this isn't a distraction, and he thinks he could be galvanizing for the team. You don't you don't agree with I, that? I don't think so. I don't think in that locker room. No. Woody Page, how about you? Well, I think the entire question is fake Hughes. Who really cares about Hugh Jackson, who's gone now? But I think <laughs> it goes back to training camp, during which. Hugh Jackson said, I'm not playing Baker Mayfield this year. He was forced into it because of an injury, and I think Baker now is is getting back, getting his revenge on him. But also, when you're 2-1 and one and having the success that Baker Mayfield is, he could, he and everybody else can realize maybe and Hugh Jackson and the offensive coordinator were holding them back. So I have no problem with him talking. I think he has matured as a person and a player, and I think it is Bill Galvin. I was galvanizing of the team because they're playing well now and they're saying he's our guy we're going to get behind him have his back and go with yeah, him Plasky, where he were goes. you questioning the two and one stat I mean it says it's two wins since no I'm questioning how that's completely it's two and one I didn't like they're undefeated I didn't like they're knocking the world dead okay. I just think again <laughs> you have to remember a lot of players oh. in there liked Hugh Jackson you two have to remember don't forget that Tim Kalashow but Plasky talked about a human being who lost his job in very sympathetic tones, like a victim of layoffs or something. Hugh Jackson kept his <laughs> job longer than anybody ever for a guy who couldn't win football but games. Still. So we can't feel too sorry for him. Uh, as far as Baker Mayfield, a quarterback who gives thoughtful answers and intelligent answers and interesting answers, I'm never going to be against that in the NFL. Adonde. Same thing. See, I'll never argue against candor from players. I will question the questions themselves. Why are you still asking him about Hugh Jackson long after the incident, the non-hug took place? Really, that's what you're asking about? He didn't hug the guy after a game. And Hugh Jackson is no longer the coach of the Browns. So focus on things that really are of essence to this team and where it's going right now. Baker might want to lay off the Instagram comments. That's going a little bit extra. But if you're going to answer questions, answer them honestly. But just ask better questions, media. Wow. All right, Professor. Flash the horn. J.A., I can't believe you said I that. Like if they didn't answer questions, it w w we wouldn't have learned about more about Mayfield and his personality. This is all revealing about the player. I'm, Good questions. Fine with that. Keep asking questions. Well, it's entirely questions. possible you need to ask better questions, though. I mean, loss in all this, and Plaschke didn't even know it when you said they were, they're 2 and 1, is that in his last three games, Baker Mayfield has been more efficient than Patrick Mahomes. Nine touchdowns and one pick. How do you know I didn't know that? How did you know well, I didn't know that? Well, if you did, that? you would have brought it up. That's <laughs> no, my point. To ask right question. You need to ask better questions. You're actually Tony. right, Tony. I didn't, I didn't okay, know that. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Button up. It's getting cold out there for you, Flashkey. We'll move on. College basketball. Whoa. First, let's check in on the net ranking. First game ever played by a net rank number one team. L. Ohio State no. immediately losing to Syracuse. Also last night, how legit does Michigan look? Like they could beat the Cleveland Cavaliers in a game of Uno. They smoked UNC, and here's Roy Williams' dad gumming after that loss. Played a heck of a lot better than we did. They coached a heck of a lot better than we did. It's uh, very frustrating right now. Everyone stunk it up, and so did I. Jay, how do you hear that from Roy after a loss to number seven Michigan in November? Him doing everything he can to not sell out his players. And he's clearly very disappointed in them, but he doesn't want to throw them under the bus collectively. So he's saying it's the worst coaching job he's ever done. Uh, but he's disappointed in his players. They couldn't do basic pick-and-roll defense. They couldn't handle simple backdoor cuts. They were a mess defensively. And he's going to put that on him, but a lot of it gets to effort. You heard Dick Vitale say that they were embarrassing the North Carolina jersey, and everyone who's ever worn it, you have to wonder if Jake Vitale was partly channeling the inner thoughts of Roy Williams when he said that. Bill Plasky? 
as one of the panelists who actually watched the game, maybe the only panelist who actually watched the game. Why, you, yeah, why do you Carolina want points for watching a game that was on TV, Bill? <laughs> well, <laughs> I was watching the game. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I just North Carolina was there for Blasky. Oh, God. Oh, I'm just freezing here. I am freezing here. Okay, North, North Carolina was horrible, but I like Roy Williams for blaming it on himself. He's kind of pretty much coaching himself, ripping himself, and I like that. Mm -hmm. Woody Page? Well, I think that he probably did coach his worst game of all time. So he's telling the truth. And going back to what Jay said, don't blame it on the media because they asked him a question last night about how his team played. Hey, blame it on the professors at places like Northwestern and Maryland where those professors are not teaching you how to ask questions. Uh, th that's A. B, that team did play terrible. He did coach poorly. They were playing a very good team, and he should have gotten more credit to Michigan. He sort of threw them in at the end and said, oh, I kind of tip my hat to them. Well, they totally outplayed them. They're a better team. And I think he's frustrated because Coach K has the four freshmen he'd like to have on his team. They've come together at Duke, and his freshmen have not come together at all at North Carolina. you got to put the blame on him. He didn't bring them uh, up to where they belong. Tim Kalashaw. He coaches a team that beat this team fairly handily on their home floor a year, a year ago. ago. They averaged 97 points. They scored 67. They, they, they killed people in the paint. They made less than half their shots in the paint last night. I think Roy Williams was flummoxed by what happened last night. Uh, in a All right, that's the word of the day. Although I, I appreciate it, but I always like it better as flummox because it sounds funnier that way. The other possibility throughout all this is that Michigan's really, really good. I mean, the winning it's going over this year. They already be Providence as well. They're a balanced team. They have some guys like to mix it up and have some fun. Speaking of mixing it up, Bill Plaschke, you have some work to do when we get to buy or sell. But you are ranked number one in the net rankings of Around the Horn panelists right now, for better or worse. I, I also that's, watched the Clipper game last that. night. Can I get credit for that? The Clipper game. We're going to talk about that in Buy or Sell. Good job. Nice oh, segue. Good. You get don't get points for that. Yeah. We'll be back at Buy or Sell. Here <laughs> doesn't play. Bill Plaschke, how big of a game tonight with no Curry and no Draymond? Look, Toronto's going to win. Kawhi's going to star. Drake's going to dance. We the North, all that, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't mean anything. Without Draymond, without Durant, with Golden State still rounded into shape, we'll look back in April and think this game was just a mirage. There is Durant. There is no Curry. How about you, Woody Page? Tony, I think I should pop out for this answer coming up here. Of course, okay. it's an important game for Toronto. They've lost eight games over five seasons to the Warriors. The Warriors, it's not important to them. They're still trying to get Green and Curry back in the lineup and, and go back to what they were at the beginning of the season. And Kawhi Leonard's going to shut down Kevin Durant tonight. He was Defensive Player of the Year before he got hurt. And this team has come together. This streak continues tonight. Kalisha. Yeah, I mean, with nobody in the West really tearing it up this year, the, the Warriors don't have to be too results-oriented till, uh, till they get their people back. But for Toronto, it's big now uh, for a statement now, and it could be big later. If they get where they want to go, they're four games ahead of Golden State. Hold on a I second. You're looking ahead already to the NBA Finals and who would have home court? Wrong. Nothing wrong with looking at June Way right too now. Soon. Okay, how about you, Jay? Home court advantage is important to look at, but the Warriors wouldn't be done. Remember, in the Western Conference Finals last year, they beat Houston in Houston games one and game seven. I disagree with Nick Friedel. The Warriors are nowhere close to being the Warriors right now. Very one-on-one -on -one heavy. Kevin Durant had to score 93 points the last two games in order for them to eke out victories against Sacramento and Orlando. Right. Buy or sell two. Number one seed in the Western Conference right now. Anybody know? Anybody, Bill Plasky? Clippers. Clippers! Yes, Clippers. the Los Angeles Clippers. There There's your free point there. You, you know, we all cover the Lakers in every single moment they have. The Clippers are the best story in the NBA right now. So, Plaschke, we'll start with you again. How is this happening, and what are you seeing from this team that makes you believe maybe they can hang around? They're playing it with no stars. This is the anti-lob city. Doc's doing a great job coaching him. And what the Clippers are doing now is they're setting the table. This is actually one long recruiting process for the two big free agents they can get next year. The free agents will see a hardworking team with no stars, selfless players, a great place to come. Kawhi, are you watching? Durant, are you watching? Okay, but you made it about next year. How about right now? Woody Page, what are you seeing from this Clippers team well, right now? 
that's the point. Doc Rivers, I think, is doing his best job overall, and he's got developing plays there. Gallinari, if he stays healthy, and that's been his problem in the past, is a potential all-star. Lou Williams is going to be the sixth player of the year. You could already guarantee it coming off the bench with for 20 every night. And I just think this team really has gelled, unlike what we've seen in other places, and will be in the top four seeds in the Western Conference. You think Conference. they're the legitimate top four seed in this Western Conference? All right, Kalashaw, by you. That's what I said. Lou Williams is one of the best players who never really gets talked about a lot uh, on a national level, and he is he is probably going to be the sixth man. Uh, you know, everything they're doing is, as Plasky said, if they get to whatever, 45 wins, whatever the number is, maybe more than that, and then they got a chance to add stars, they're in perfect position okay. this offseason. Do you think they're a top four team in the West, like what he said, Tim? At the end of the year, no. But five or six right there, right below you? it. Yeah. Regular season they can be, and not only is Lou Williams a guy that can get them clutch baskets, they've adopted the identity of Montrez Harrell. Hard-working guy, there's a hard-working yeah, team. At times, great. he's outplayed Kevin Durant and Giannis Antetokounmpo during stretches of games, and he deserves the credit, they deserve the credit, but they have a ceiling of the second round. You can outwork guys in the regular season, it doesn't cut it during the playoffs. Buy or sell three, Cam Newton. I feel like I'm playing the best football of my career. Straight up. My assuredness of every single play, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. When somebody's at their best and facing me and I'm at my best, we, we win. He would go on to talk about the team's recent losing streak and say that's all that matters in the end. Tim, can you say Cam is playing the best you've ever seen him? And what about the Panthers now in this three-game losing streak? The numbers say he's playing his best, best passer rating ever, and he's, he's never been a highly efficient passer. I think Norv Turner has helped him there. Throwing the ball short to McCaffrey helps, but every every quarterback in the league benefits from short passes. But I don't know if you can look at his play overall and say this is as good as his Super Bowl season when he threw 35 touchdowns and ran more that season. I don't think it's at that level. Yeah, okay, Donde? Yeah, he's more efficient. He's a better passer right now, but is he more dangerous than when he was running more? No. Like his rookie season, he had rushed for 14 touchdowns. That made him more of a threat. That made the Panthers a better team. It just wasn't good for his long-term health. No plastic. Well, I think he's the best all around he's been, but I'm, I don't really love his comments. I mean, I love the fact that I don't like the fact that his team is on a three game losing streak and he's talking about himself and how he's doing really, really well. He's not noting that the team's one loss record is really all that matters. For him this is interesting, Bill. This year. is much he's like never, the Baker Mayfield from five minutes ago, play. 10 minutes ago. He's being asked these questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, I don't. Yeah, but I think he could have diverted it to you know what we need to win. All right, I'll be the best. I can Woody be Page, how about you? Well, as Bill knows, statistics are for losers, and it doesn't matter if he's having a great year. He should underplay that and say, "I think I'm having a good year," but all is important. That should be your lead, not your add-on. Okay. He did say end. that, but it was okay. All right, all right. And this was ten minutes yeah. worth of interview. We showed about he was fifteen seconds. All right, all right. <laughs> Bill Plasky, I'm, I'm almost uh, afraid to ask you a question now. ETH show, that's our second screen viewing. And when you go there, you get all the stats. And today's lineup are four active 300 game winners. Those remaining, Woody Page, J.A. Donde. Good luck. Showdown one, dad, former NFL quarterback, Brad Johnson. He went to Florida State. Uncle, Mark Richt. He coaches Miami. You, Max Johnson, you're your own man, and you're committing to LSU. Woody, did he make the right call? And how's that going to go at the family reunion? Absolutely. This is not about the you. It's about the me. And he chose to go to <laughs> LSU where he can win a national championship. And at the family reunion, Mark Rick can be over in the corner throwing horseshoes while he's celebrating. But it's not about the you or the me. This is about Coach Ed Ordron. The LSU coach went in and out-recruited Uncle Mark. What does that say about Coach O's recruiting skills that he can pluck this kid out and get him to choose LSU over family. Uh, I think it is about the me over the you. I like that, Woody Page. That was pretty good. Point. We'll move on. Showdown two. Golf. John Sendon in Australia. Check out the driver. Snapping on his downswing. He whiffed on the ball. Tour officials said the swing counted. He hit, take the ball off the tee, hit iron off the tee box, and play the last nine holes driverless. Is that fair for an equipment malfunction, Jay? Yeah, this is fair. This is not NASCAR. We get to, you know, go in and change your tires midway through the event. And if you didn't have these rules, how many more broken clubs do you think we'd see out of frustration? J.A., the rules suck. You should be able to trade clubs during the round. <laughs> I've accidentally really. broken a driver over my knee. I should have been able to go get another driver, and he should have two. It's on you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Woody, I think I'm inclined to agree with you, maybe not with your language, uh, every time a golf rule comes up. Points, game, FaceTime, Woodrow Wilson Page Jr.